Hey everyone, my name is Vanessa. Welcome to the house today. If you're new, visiting for the first time, we want you to feel right at home. Well, I'm Vanessa and I'm here to let you know about a couple things coming up and four ways for you to be part of our church community. The first way to be part of our church community is through Next Steps. Next Steps is our process to help you become a part of our church community. We have step one, open house lunch, step two, mission and values, and step three, the house is my home where you can officially make the house your home church. On June 2nd, we will be hosting step one, open house lunch in the library. If you are new or new around here, or if you know someone who's new in the community, Go ahead and invite them to be a part of this lunch where you get to have lunch with some of our team and learn a little bit more about the house and we would love to learn your story as well. So you can go ahead and sign up today online under our coming soon page. The second way to be a part of our church community is through groups. Groups exist to help you develop and grow a deeper community here at the house. I'm happy to say that we are in the midst of connect group season. If you're newer to a community or you're not in a connect group, can I encourage you to go ahead and sign up for one today? We have a couple groups that meet immediately after service. Some of our leaders are sitting right here in our service. Go ahead and find a group that you can attend. We want to encourage you to grow and develop in that deeper community. The third way to be a part of our church community is through events. Events exist to help inspire and encourage our church community. We want to invite you on June 16th to come celebrate your dad here at the house. We're going to have some fun things planned for all the dads and an encouraging message. So go ahead and prepare and invite and we'll see you there. The fourth way to be a part of our church community is through classes. Classes exist to help you learn biblical principles to grow your faith. In just a couple of weeks, we are beginning our next class on June 16th called Basic Doctrine. We're gonna be coming together on Wednesday nights, both in person and on Zoom. David Hansen is gonna be teaching this class and I promise you are gonna learn so much about the Bible. I wanna encourage you to be a part. Go ahead and sign up today under our coming soon page. Well, that's all for now. We'll go ahead and go straight to the message, but we wanna let you know we have so many things planned for the month of June. We look forward to seeing you next week. Hey everyone, welcome to the house. My name is Wes, I'm the lead pastor here, and wherever you're watching from, we are so glad that you're here with us today. Uh, maybe a friend shared this with you, but however you got this, just wanna say thank you so much. And a big thank you to those of you, you keep sharing uh, our messages online, you're texting it to a friend. Uh, some of you are recent subscribers to our YouTube channel, you're following us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we're just happy to be on this journey with you, and it's a very big deal to us that you would uh, trust us with your time. So thank you so much for being here. If you have questions about who we are, what we're about, uh, or even how you can join up with us for a Sunday morning service or one of our worship nights or any of the projects that we do, uh, like leadership projects and missional projects in our community, all of that you can check out at thehousela.org. Today, we're going to jump into our message where we've been continuing the series. It started last month called Mother Wisdom, and we're continuing that on today. Today, we're talking about Mother Wisdom, five things that wisdom says about money. Five things that wisdom says about money. By the way, our goal right now, today we're airing this on May 19th, our goal is that every day we read one proverb. While we're studying the book of Proverbs, we read one proverb. So today's the 19th, and so we're going to read Proverbs chapter number 19. All right, here's a good question for you. Why are some people better at money than others? Why are some people better at money than others? And why do some people just, they have a knack for money. Maybe you have a friend like that, they're just... They're just good with money. They've, they've got that hustle. They've got that thinking. There, there's something that there's something that's different. Here's a here's a good question for you. Can I also be good at money? I'm under uh, the impression, the thought that everyone can be good at money. 
Some people it comes a little bit easier, but it's just a skill like all other skills that everyone can learn. What do you think about when you think about money? What is it? Is it about power? Is it about obtaining? Is it about security? Uh, is it about proving people wrong? How you think about money will determine if you have money or not. And how you think about money will determine if money has you or not. So not only will it determine if you have money and if money has you, it also determines how much money you actually have. And if we listen to wisdom, if we listen to what wisdom says, we will get the fruit of wisdom. So if we listen to the advice of wisdom, we will then get the fruit of wisdom. So let's look into the book of Proverbs asking that question of what does wisdom say about money? Number one, it says to save. Save. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8 says this. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince, no governor, no ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer long. Gathering food, what? For winter. Proverbs 30, verse 25 says, ants, they aren't strong using the illustration of ants again, but they store up all their food in summer. So life happens to all of us. Some people say, hey, I thought you're a faith guy. I am a faith guy. I have faith that things will happen. You will get a flat tire. Your car's transmission will go out. Your shoes will wear out. The food that you bought last week, it's going to disappear, especially if you have teenagers that things happen. And so we have to, wisdom tells us that we have to save for, for winter. We, during those times of plenty, during those times that there's a little bit more than at other times, the, the Bible tells us and wisdom tells us, don't spend that extra, but actually save that extra. Put it aside because you're going to need that at some other point down the road. Winter happens to us all. So you have to save. Number two, things that wisdom says about money. Number two, it says this, it's not wise to co-sign for others. Now, I'm not trying to break up friendships or make things difficult, but let's jump in to what the Bible says about this. Proverbs 6, 1 through 5 says this. Hey, look, if you put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, we're not talking about husbands and wives. We're not talking about that. But we're just talking about when you're signing on, you're co-signing for a friend, even I would say a boyfriend, a girlfriend, anything like that, guaranteeing the debt of a stranger. If you have, and this is how it's described, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement, and to say it's a blessing, if you have trapped yourself by an agreement of co-signing and you're caught by what you've said, this is how wisdom describes co-signing. Follow my advice. Save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride. Go back and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Do not rest. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Wisdom describes co-signing for a friend. Like your friend's like, hey, I got this new charger. I want to buy it. My credit's not where it's supposed to be. You've got good credit. You've been doing the work. Can you co-sign for me for this card? I promise. Look, hey, here's my bank account. I promise I will always make the payments. You know me. We're best friends. And this is where the Bible describes that conversation is not a friendly conversation. That conversation is a trap. Because what you are doing is you are trapping yourself in a payment for something that you don't even own for 36, 48 months that you might actually be putting yourself on the hook for. Your friend can have all the good intentions in the world, but if they lose their job the next day, you are now responsible for that payment. So wisdom says, do not co-sign for a friend. Now, again, we're not talking about husbands and wives. You're, you know, you're, you're buying a, a, a house or a property or something like that with your spouse. Say, I can't co-sign. That's not what the Bible's talking about. It's talking about between friends, between acquaintances, and I would even put in that category boyfriends and girlfriends because there's not a, a death do us part type covenant going on there. Number three, Bible says this and wisdom says this about money. Number three, hustle hard. 
Now, this is my language. This is LA language about the hustle. Proverbs 10, 5 says this, a wise youth harvests in the summer. The one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. Hard work is not a curse. Hard work is a gift. Think about it this way. Adam and Eve in the garden before sin even existed. You know what God gave Adam? He gave him a job. Adam is out there tending the garden. He's working. He's naming animals. He's doing creative work. He's doing manual labor. He's doing all of these things. And it's he's tending the garden. And it's not a result of sin. It's a part of the dignity of God. Wise earnings should enhance your life. Number four, it says this, be generous. Be generous. Proverbs eleven twenty four through 28 says this, give freely and you will actually become more wealthy. Be stingy, you lose everything. Isn't that wild? Give freely, like you have stuff that's going out and you would think that now you have less, but it says actually if you give freely, you have more. And if you hold on really tight, you will have less. It says this, verse 25, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will, they themselves, they will be refreshed. People curse those who hoard their grain. They just hold on to it all about themselves. But they bless the one who sells in the time of need. If you search for good, you will find favor. But if you search for evil, it will find you. Trust in your money, down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. If you chase money, so in the last point, I talked about hustle and working hard. Man, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. But that doesn't mean that you chase money. Because if you chase money, it will disappear. Instead, we chase wisdom. We don't chase money. We chase wisdom. We chase after God. We chase after his presence. We chase after him. If you chase money, it will disappear. Generosity looks like this. Let me give you a couple of practical examples of what generosity looks like. Blessing others who are truly in need. By the way, not just those who say that they're in need, but those who are truly in need. We'll do a series on this later. But even Paul telling Timothy about benevolence and how do we help other people, he says, hey, help the widows who are widows indeed. So blessing others. Another point of what generosity looks like is tithing. You don't have to pray about tithing. You just, it's, it's a form of worship. That 10%, God, this belongs to you. The Bible actually uses the word of return. When we, when we get worship God and we give with our tithes, we're not just kind of like, oh, I got to, you know, I got to do this thing to appease God. It's not about appeasing. It's about returning what rightfully belongs to him. And if you can, another way that generosity looks like if you're able, if you can do those first two, tithing and blessing people in, in the, if you can, and you still have extra, you can slip someone a 20 just because. You can buy someone coffee just because. That's what generosity looks like. Number five, don't spend it all. Invest. Don't spend it all. Invest. Proverbs 31, 13 through 16 talks about this woman of virtue. And it describes her in one of the descriptions of this virtuous woman where it's like, hey, this is a type of woman that you want to become if you're a woman. And gentlemen, this is the type of woman that you want to marry. This is the virtuous woman. It describes her as this. It says this. She finds wool and flax and busily and busily spends it. Like she's she's investing. She buys, gets some products and she turns it into something. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for a household and plan the day's work for serving girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. And with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. How about that? What a beautiful concept. She goes to inspect a field. Not just some people, they call it investing and it's actually speculation. One time I had a conversation with someone, they said, I'm going to go invest in this. And when I started asking them questions, I realized it was not an investment because they had no answers. It was literally just a gamble. Hey, how do you know that this is going to work out? Do you, do you have any information? No, so-and-so told me it was a good deal. So I gave them this much money. I said, man, that's, that's not an investment. That's a, that's a scratch ticket. That's a gamble. It says that she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. She got a big windfall. She flipped a property. She made money. 
It's like, wow, that's great. What are you going to do? Are you going to go out to lunch? Are you going to go to Tahiti? Are you going to spend, you know, the, the, the winter in Southern Italy? You know what she did? She actually turned that and with her earnings, she planted a vineyard. She flipped her property and she turned it and planted a vineyard. You know what vineyards do? Year after year after year, when you tend them, they produce season after season grapes. They produce harvests. They continue to produce more. Proverbs tells us, don't spend it all. When you get a big windfall, I mean, one of the things I always tell the business people in our community is, hey, when you get a big windfall, when you uh, get an inheritance, when you get something big, ask God, what do you want me to do with this? Don't just go spend it. Maybe you're supposed to give some of it. Maybe you're supposed to invest some of it. But don't just waste it. Some money is meant for is meant for saving. Some money is meant for giving. Some money is meant for uh, for investing, and some money is meant for spending. So saving, giving, spending, and investing. If you can buy a vineyard, if you can buy land, own something that's tangible that can produce an ongoing result. And if you've misspent, maybe you've been living a life of misspending and you've just been wasting or you're finding yourself in debt and you're finding yourself that you've co-signed for friend, simply just do this is repent. I know that sounds kind of crazy. Just go to God and say, God, I'm sorry I've wasted. Will you forgive me? Will you help me get back on track? If you've co-signed for a friend, go to that friend, go to that friend and say, hey, friend, I'm so sorry I've made a mistake. Can we find a way to get my name off that co-sign? It's as simple as that. Um, I'm so excited. Next week, we're going to wrap up this series on wisdom. And we're going to talk about wisdom, especially when it comes to sex and sexuality. Can't wait to see you back next week here at the house. But before we close today, let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you for every friend who's watching this right now. God, help us to be wise when it comes to love. Especially the day and age that we are in right now. God, help us to be wise and to live with wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends, God bless you. I can't wait to see you back next week. Again, in the future, we will have a series specifically just on money itself and how we should respond and how we should give and how we should live and interact with money. I'm looking forward to this series. But next week, we're going to continue on. And we're going to finish off this series on wisdom with sex. God bless. We'll see you back next week here at the house. Come show your